If you've been on the Facebook, you probably see me enough to know who I am and whatnot. So I want to break down something that I really want to help educate the community on specifically. And I thought a video would be a better idea than just typing this out as a wall of text. So what I want to talk about here is the elite and the nexus line of ECUs because there isn't a lot of education. I had an interesting conversation with a customer yesterday asking about an ECU for his car and he wasn't even aware some of these products were available. The other thing is too, there's a lot of confusion at when you need to make adjustments to the next ECU step. So I thought that I'd make it more clear and easier for everyone to understand the differences between the four, when you would want to use each one for each application and you know the caveats that you can give or take on each one. So the first and foremost one is the Elite 550. The Elite 550 is gonna be your essentials base entry level ECU. Now this would be for someone that was gonna put like a power FC on the car, um, anyone's gonna kinda of do something budget micro tech anything along those lines, this is gonna be it. Uh, these are super affordable. Uh, the 550 I think is like uh, 850, the 750 is about 1100 I believe. And the differences between the 550 and the 750 is that the 550 only has four injector ignition inputs and then the 750 has six injector and ignition inputs. So what I'm able to do with the 750 over the 550 is be able to run three stages of injection. So if I wanna make a high horsepower ethanol car, for example, and I wanna run two primary, secondaries, and tertiary injectors, I'm able to do that in the 750. As far as functionality between the 550 and 750, it is the same. The inputs and outputs are the same. You do get additional outputs on the 750 if you are not utilizing that five and six ignition or uh, injection output. So if you have other weird things, for example, like a clutch slipper, um, or anything along those lines that needs an output, you do have additional outputs on the 750. That being said, when you start getting to the point you start really using these outputs, I would recommend jumping up to the next ECU. So what is this ECU for in particular? This is gonna be for your guy that's building your basic st stock port, street port, 200 to 400 horsepower turbo build. It's gonna do everything you need it to do. The big downside you have here is that this only has one stage of engine protection and it doesn't have a ton of IO. It's really only made to just run what the car has. Being a rotary, it's nice because not as many sensors or outputs being used as say something like a Honda. So you do get plenty of IO to do a lot of stuff, but when you try to run like a factory FD or FC chassis, for example, it is a little bit more hectic to get set up as far as IO goes. Luckily, a lot of stuff on the FDs and FCs is handled through the taxable chassis mm -hmm. harness itself, so it is independent of the ECU. Um, so there's an advantage there. However, I would say that if you're wanting to protect your investment, mm -hmm. uh, I would jump up a little bit more. Uh, but this, I would say, is about the equivalent of something like a Adaptronic, the Maserati ECU styles. That's what this is good to represent. It's kind of in that range, it's kind of replacement. It's a lot more reliable, the software works better. Use the same software as all these ECUs. Um, if you're trying to save money and want to get your car running, this is a great option. This will do pretty much everything you want it to do. If you're planning on actually racing the car at any serious extent, like doing time attacks or autocross or anything along those lines, and it's not just like you know once or twice a year sort of thing, I would highly recommend jumping up. But if you're just trying to drive the car to work or school and back every day, maybe go on the weekend, have fun, um, go on cruises, maybe do like you know one track day, this will kind of be sufficient for what you're wanting to do. Now. We jump up to Elite 1500 and 2500. This is the next step up over the 750, 550. What is this for? Well, nowadays I would argue that if you're looking to buy a new ECU, a new Haltech ECU, I would not be buying the 1500, 2500. That's not because they're not good. It's not because they can't do what you want them to do or anything along those lines. It's simply because of this. And I'm going to explain why, because this is the part that a lot of people don't understand. This is the Nexus S2. This is the new version of the Elite 1500 and 2500. So the S2 is a 1500, the S3 is a 2500. The difference between the S2, S3, the 1500, 2500 is the 1500 and S2 are four injection, four ignition outputs, whereas the 2500 and S3 are eight and eight. So what do you get with this box over this box? The big thing with this box is you get a lot more IO. So I'm able to run way more sensors to be able to monitor what's going on with my engine health. I can run oil pressure, fuel pressure, I can run my wideband, EGTs. I can run anything I want to run on here. I have a lot more analog inputs available. I can run multiple speed sensors to be able to run trash control, for example. The CCU also includes torque management, which is not available in the Elite ECs whatsoever. Um, it has torque management as well. Um, so you can get torque management, which is a traction control strategy that works really well. Um, but yeah, what you get with this is it's a lot faster, a lot smoother, way more data logging memory, which is a big downside for this thing. You get about 20 channels for maybe 15 minutes on the 750. This thing is 500 megabytes of data logging memory, so I'm able to data log literally every single channel in the ECU at much faster speeds as well, by the way, um, for significantly longer, for hours. So I'm able to log, I think, up to 500 channels for hours. So I can basically monitor every single vital I need to do in the engine, 
Um, if I'm doing a track day, making an actual session, I'm able to pull all the data from that session and really look over and find all the issues. Whereas in Elite 750, 550, you're really limited to that 10, 15 minute situation. So if you're running anything beyond just, you know, like a couple pools or whatever, this is gonna be beneficial because you're able to actually see all the data you need. And like I said as well, a lot more IO, I'm able to do more inputs, more outputs, so more sensors to be able to read engine health and things like that along the lines. This is gonna be your best bet. So in my opinion is that if you can swing a little more money, I would jump from the 750 to the S2. Now, why am I mentioning the S2 or the 1500? Why would I do this when they have, you know, things, whatever. So the Elite 1500 retails, I wanna say like $1,600, $1,700. And when you run an Elite 1500, you also need to buy a wideband. And most people opt for the Haltech CAN wideband, the WB1. So if you buy this and then the wideband, the wideband itself retails for $375. So the ECU plus the wideband costs the same amount of money as this. So the thing with this is that the S2 has an integrated wideband controller. So I'm able to simply plug a sensor in to the ECU without buying an extra box. So imagine this like a 1500 and WB1 into the same box. It works right off the bat, not a lot more money spent. Um, I think when all said and done, really, they're the same price or within about $100, $200 of each other. So for $100, $200, you get the new technology, you get all the new features of the S2, S3, and you just get, you get the wideband stuff built in, just way more simpler, easier to use box. It's new technology and it's roughly the same price. So the only time I'd recommend that you buy something like a 1500, 2500 is if you find it used on Marketplace for pretty cheap. Otherwise, if you're buying new, just opt up for the S2, S3. What you get on top of the S3 as well, on top of the data log memory stuff as well, and the torque management stuff has Wi-Fi capabilities. So I'm able to actually, if I want to adjust my car on the fly, Say I'm going to make another pass. I want to make, turn up the boost up, pulling up the laptop, or you know my tuner tune the car and doesn't let me put the laptop on it. For example, I can hop on my phone and adjust it via the Haltech app on the phone and make my adjustments to my tune there. I also have the ability to wirelessly tune the car on my laptop as well without plugging in. And the other cool benefit, which is such, it's a tiny thing, is that you can actually plug in to the ECU itself into the USB, and it can power the ECU enough to be able to change the maps around. On a 550 and the 750 and the Elite 1500s, 2500s, in previous times, to be able to access the map, you would have to turn the key on to power up the ECU to be able to use it, or power it through the CAN bus to make it work. This you can do without powering on the ECU, meaning you can put the map on the ECU without actually plugging the ECU into the car. So I can have it on my desk here, I can flash my base up here, take it outside of the customer car, and then tune the car from there instead of sitting in the, the car, whatever, if it's like a million degrees outside, I don't want to be in the heat. It's all there as well. And once again, a Wi-Fi too. So if I'm running multiple cars to track, multiple customer cars, I want to be able to adapt them. I don't want to hop car to car. I can simply have all the cars heat on and adjust the Wi-Fi for each individual car and then sit my trailer and be able to adjust everything. So it's really beneficial in that regards. And like I said, the big thing as well is data logging memory, especially with you guys driving street car stuff. Say you have an issue that's going on, for example, like a fuel pressure drop and you don't always see it. Um, because your data log is constantly rolling if you have the data log setting set up, I can basically just run this data logger full time and then know what happened in the car for the past couple hours. So if I run into an issue, there's no crossing my fingers hoping that I manage to capture in my limited log on the ECU. I know it's gonna be in here because of data logging capabilities. So the S2 and S3 is what I would highly recommend if you're trying to buy a new ECU for your car, whether it's FD or FC. On top of that, just like the 1500 or 2500, there are plug and play options for all your FD series cars. For FCs, it's still not available, so you will need to actually buy a harness for an FC, but an FD, you can still plug and play into it easily. Um, with the 750, 550, there are no plug and play harnesses, so you will have to construct your own harness to make the car run, um, or you can buy a harness from somebody else that's made. But with this, you can simply buy the jumper that can be included with the ECU um, for just like 300 or 400 bucks and have it simply plug and play and ready to go. So above the S2, S3, we have this bad boy. This is the Nexus R5. Now this is the top of the line. I would say the Nexus R5 is not gonna be applicable to 90% of you guys or 99% of you guys here. What this is, this is an ECU and a power distribution module in one box. So what I would recommend this is if you have a car that is stripped all the way down to the bare chassis and you have none of the fuse boxes or anything along those lines and you wanna simplify your wiring, this is the answer. The big thing that this ECU has built in, like I said, is a PDM. A PDM is how you can power everything through the ECU. It's effectively a fuse box inside the computer. It's all solid state stuff as well. So I'm able to actually, one, monitor which fuse or which channel or which relay is using how much power where. I'm able to see if it overcurrents on the ECU. So whereas a fuse box, if I had a fuse blow in the car, 
I would have to check all the fuses to see which fuse blew and figure it out if it wasn't something completely obvious, you know, like a fuel pump or whatever. I'd have to go through the car and check all the fuses individually. Whereas an ECU is a smart fuse box. I'm able to jump on the computer itself, look at it and see which channel is actually blown. I can reset it through the ECU. Um, it's all very simple and it lets you do everything through the computer. I can power things, create strategies to power things up whenever they need to be powered. I can PWM, so for example, you guys running Davies water pumps, I can actually PWM the pump without buying the external controller. If I have a brushless pump, say like a welder 2345A. Um, I'm able to actually control the speed of the pump through PDM here. I can soft start fans instead of hard starting them so that the actual amperage draw from the fan initially isn't hard at the bat. There's a lot of cool features you can do with the R3. Now the R3 and R5 both have all the same features as the S2-S3. The only difference is the included PDM. The R3 has four 25 amp outputs, high, high current outputs, and then it has, I want to say like 11 or 12. So the R5 has 12 eight amp, eight half bridge outputs, so eight amp outputs, and the R3 has a little bit less. So the R3 is the equivalent of an Elite 2500 with the PDM built into it, or an S3 with an Elite fit built into it, um, and the R5 is something completely, it's a completely different beast. So if you're wanting to build a car from scratch, and you want to wire it up, for one, all of your wires for the car will come from here. You can control your brake lights, your headlights, uh, your starter control, everything can come through the ECU here. So every wire in the car can come back to your ECU. And you also have the ability to monitor what each wire is doing individually as the ECU is running. I know to reset it. So a, a good example for this as well would be if I took a car down the drag strip and I had a fuel pump on the edge and I, in a car, for example, blew my fuse on, on the fuel pump. Well, what happened is once I got to the track, my fuse is blown. I then have to find a fuse or get towed back to the pits to figure out how to fix this, whatever, and go through there. On the Nexus R5, I can set it up to where the actual fuse will reset. So if I were to blow the fuel pump fuse at the end of the track because the high loads just causing the amperage to go up and ends up blowing the fuse, I can have the ECU automatically reset the fuse after say 30 seconds or so, allowing me to start the car back and drive it back to the pits and then be able to diagnose why the actual amperage output is doing what it's doing. Just simple stuff like that um, makes your life way easier when it comes to really trying to find these issues. It, for you guys that are afraid of wiring, that, uh, that really hate going through stuff like that, this simplifies your life because simply the computer will tell you where the wiring is happening because it will tell you everything because the PDM built in. Um, it basically replaces everything in your car. So sometimes, depending on how in depth your car is, you might need to add an additional PDM on top, but this will cover a majority of all your features. What I like to run through these is your fan, the fuel pump, uh, if I have a water pump, run the water pump through it as well. My ignition, uh, my injection, all that stuff will go through the ECU rather than coming from the fuse box from the car and then being translated over. You can also set up the starter through the ECU as well so I can have it be a one touch start, like a new modern car I can hit start stop button and it'll start the cart for me so I don't have to sit there and crank on it with the key or anything along those lines either. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. So, hopefully that breaks down and makes it easy for all four of them to understand, but to kind of go back and understand exactly what I was saying again, the 550-750 is going to be your great entry-level ECU. If you're just trying to build like a little basic daily driver, not make a ton of power, not needing to really beat on the car consistently, don't need a ton of data logging capabilities, this is going to get you going. It's also going to save you about $600 to $1,000 to get just this box alone. So if you're looking to do something on a budget, this is great. Like I said, if you're planning on buying a Power FC um, or something like a Microtech, one of those cheaper lower-end computers, this is your replacement for that. It'll do everything you want it to do. There is no reason not to get these, especially for the price point it's at. Just keep in mind the amount of money you're spending on these cars is ridiculously high for what it is. Um, and it's a good idea to spend the extra money to protect your investment. So if you could spend just a little bit more money, my recommendation is get the S2, the S2 or the S3. Now the S3 is gonna be good for someone who runs six injectors or eight injectors. The S2 is gonna be for someone who wants to run four injectors. Um, the 1500, 2500, I would bypass if I'm buying new. If it's a marketplace thing I'm getting for cheap, 100%, go for it. It's going to do everything you need it to do, uh, minus some of the race car features, which most people aren't using anyway, so it's not a big deal. The S2, S3 will cover what you want to do, so will the 1500, 2500. The R3 slash R5, I would jump to this, is if I need to rewire my car from scratch, um, or I want to heavily simplify the wiring, I want, I want to go back from scratch and redo it. If I have to rewire the car from scratch, instead of buying a fuse box and doing all that stuff, just get this. It's a little bit more pricey. The R3 is around the same price as the S3, um, just a little bit cheaper, or the S3 is a little bit cheaper, but not much, whereas this is significantly more expensive, but an R3 will cover pretty much everything you need to do. But hopefully that explains everything, because I was in a conversation with someone who literally didn't know the S2 existed. So um, because of that, I want to help you guys out. If you guys are interested in purchasing this, you can shoot me a DM. I can get you squared away with the best pricing you possibly get. We also offer remote tuning as well or anything along those lines. So if you're interested in getting your car into the Haltech ECU, or you have any questions about tuning the ECU or needing a remote tune, Hit me up, let me know, and we'll go from there. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I explained anything. If you have any questions, leave it below. I appreciate you.